So I thought what we could do today is talk about the trail wrist. Um, a lot of people that play golf tend to be, for me, being right-handed, um, tend to be right-hand dominant as well. Now, that's not the case for everybody, and that's absolutely fine. This video won't necessarily be applicable for, for everybody, but for a lot of people that are sort of trail-hand dominant playing that side, um, you tend to find from uh, students that I work with that they like to have a feeling of that arm having a role of influence in the golf swing. Um, and often the question that I tend to get is wrist positions. And you tend to see a lot of videos about you have to maintain certain wrist positions in the golf swing. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to talk about impact, okay? Because a lot of people tend to think, oh, if I, if I try and keep my wrist um, sort of bent or hinged, as it's often known, like this, or, or even often, you know, extended, depends on, you know, the, the type of terminology that somebody uses, that that should be a swing thought. You know, I personally think that's a fine swing thought to have. What, what I would say is that your wrists in the downswing are going to be influenced by how you pivot and how you move. So if you're somebody who starts your downswing and you sort of fire that trail hip forward, your right shoulder goes up, you know, your trail shoulder goes up, it doesn't matter how much hinge you try and hold onto this wrist, you're always going to let those angles go so you can hit the golf ball. So I, I tend to say to most students, look, theoretically, if you want to hold onto that wrist angle for as long as you possibly can in that sort of impact area, the only way you can really do that is getting your trail shoulder lower to the ground. You know, if your trail shoulder's lower to the ground, your trail arm can stay bent. If your trail arm can stay bent, your wrist can stay, you know, hinged, let's say, right? Like so. If you're somebody, like I say, who has more of a tendency to stand up, you, you can't hold on to hinge because otherwise you'd theoretically miss the ball. The club would rise up and miss it. So, you know, that's why I'm not a massive lover of that. I don't think that's necessarily a, a, a need, you know, in terms of on its own. I, I think, you know, you need to move your body well to influence your impact area. But that being said, I do think in the backswing position it has a role. Now, in the takeaway, I know students and, and there's obviously golf pros who create a bit of a hinge. Um, that's absolutely fine and that will tend to do things like maybe flatten that lead wrist off a little earlier. Absolutely no problem with that. But what I'm always trying to get, again, my students to, to do is to be as on plane as you possibly can. So if I kind of got set up here and we sort of draw a line in to represent my target line, what on plane basically means is by the time you get to the top of your backswing, the club shaft is pointing down towards your target line. And to be able to do that, your, hit, your wrist would need an element of, again, should we say, hinge, like so. Obviously, if you don't have enough hinge, your club shaft is going to be more vertical. Theoretically, if you had too much hinge, then the club shaft would be more shallow, um, potentially. But my point would be, if you're somebody who wants to have a feeling of, of this wrist position and what it's doing, I personally would shift as much consciousness into the backswing. It's going to be much easier, I promise you, in your golf swing, if you get yourself into a position like so, probably avoiding excessive arm, you know, elevation in the backswing, keeping it nice and wide, keeping it relatively short, keeping the shaft pointing on plane, you're going to find life much easier to start the downswing and bring that club down with you, as opposed to if you're somebody who has a tendency to sort of, you know, pop it into different positions and you've got to reroute it down. So what I'm hoping is that for those of you that have been asking about this wrist position, this is a helpful video. And for those of you that haven't, hopefully it's a helpful video in terms of understanding that, you know, yes, you can introduce consciousness with what your trial wrist is doing, but personally, I would only be thinking about it in the backswing and maybe in the early downswing because it helps you keep the club on plane. I think beyond that, a lot of that is to do with your sort of how your body pivots and your hands can't really be the influencer. If you're pivoting well, theoretically, like I said, and you're somebody who does move like this and you're still flipping, then of course, then that's why I said earlier, there's no harm with you holding onto those angles to try and keep that club moving through. See you guys again really soon.